So I bet you it was it was great to have uh, quiet in the house for all those hours. It was. I yeah, we we got the energy. Just see the mouse around like a yeah. Uh huh. Basically, yes. Oh, my goodness. I I got this one back in the room. What's up? They're coming, they're just slow. Thanksgiving blowout bash. Let's get rid of all the ham that's sitting over there. So uh, I cooked four turkey, four hams. I should have maybe only cooked three, but that's all right. We had them, so let's cook them. Let's eat them. So 
So there'll be ham. There's those small little dinner rolls. You want to make sandwiches. There's some mashed potatoes, some corn. I think there's some sweet potatoes. Also, also when you go in on the immediately to your uh, right hand side where we only have where we have the desserts, which will, there's still desserts that will be set out. So German chocolate cake. There's I think there's some more of James the Second's apple pie over there. I think there's another one of those over there. So uh, there's one more sweet potato or pecan. The only pecan that's left is sitting on my stove at the house. So, uh, and those over there, not over there. There, that way, not that way. No detours? No detours. <laughs> but when you go in on the right-hand side, there is a table set up. And on that table is a ton of bread, uh, bags of pretzel rolls, bags of cub uh, Canadian rye, uh, I think there's some French bread. Uh, there is a, like a, there's a ton of the pretzel rolls and uh, probably a million and a half bags of <laughs> those large tortillas that you use for wraps. Everything. So take whatever you want, take whatever you need, take as much as you want, take all of it. <laughs> there is a box there that has little bags of potato chips in it. If you want to take some potato chips, if you want to have chips with your sandwich, go grab a bag of chips with your sandwich. I don't care. I just want the stuff gone. It was all donated, and it needs to be gone. So uh, all of it, even though if you look at the sticker, the sticker may say, like, October something, but it's all been frozen. It just came out of the freezer. And uh, so it's on the table. You're going to take what you want. And, and if you want to bless somebody else, I mean, what, what better Christmas gift than a loaf of French bread, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, three loaves of French bread. Or three loaves of French bread. Is <laughs> so... <laughs> So with that, we do have our regular service this morning, and tonight we will be showing a movie, a documentary on the Christian music artist Russ Taft. Uh, he uh, struggled. All these Grammy Awards, all these Dove Awards, one of the top Christian artists with the, in the era of Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith. And all the while he was winning awards, he was battling uh, addiction in the background. And this is his movie about, his documentary about how he overcame it. It is a, I, I've watched it already to make sure it was, you know, sometimes they make these things that are kind of cheesy Christian movies, I, let's just be honest, you know, some Christian movies are kind of cheesy, <laughs> and uh, I watched this one, and, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's hokey in its sense, but it's just real, that's what I liked about it, it was a, it's a real story, and it's a real person, and it touches on real issues, and it doesn't just show how the addiction affected him, it also shows how it affected his family, and it also shows how people who cared about him, how they supported him, so... A really good movie, so I would recommend you come 6.30 p.m. tonight. Upstairs, we'll be watching it. Uh, Wednesday, back to our regular ladies' Bible study at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, going to the Lord's Prayer. At 5.30 p.m., we'll be having prayer time. 6 o'clock, a light meal. And 6.30, we'll be doing uh, part two of our wrap-up of weeks four, five, and six of Mind World. So it'll be a discussion time to go over the three videos that we had just finished watching. So did you catch all that? That's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then on Saturday, uh, men's Bible study and breakfast at 8.30 downstairs. Uh, if you have any breakfast ideas, talk to Roger and Michael because they'll be running the show because I will be gone Friday and Saturday. I'll be back Saturday night with Tracy. We'll be attending the Northwoods Baptist Pastors and Spouses uh, Christmas uh, party in Grand Rapids on Saturday. So I won't be here for men's Bible study. But I know Roger and Michael will have a blessing. So uh, I told them, whatever you guys want to do for breakfast, it's on you. So, uh, other than that, that's all the major announcements you have this week. We do have Man Cave Monday on Monday, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so come out. I don't know what we'll be doing or what we're talking about. Our favorite team is on. The Niners don't play Chiefs. on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> the Niners play the Ravens today. <laughs> Yeah, We're watching the replay? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> our favorite team, our state's favorite team will be on. Your state's favorite team, the Packers? What? <laughs> <laughs> be nice. Well, this is northern Minnesota. See, I, know, I thought there was, you know, people complain about stuff in the cities from up here. So I, I see everything in the cities is bad except the football team. Is that what it is? <laughs> okay. So we'll probably have Monday Night Football on the big screen and just a good time of fellowship. So. Uh, also, then the last thing I want to announce is we do have our we have December prayer points and we do have our January prayer points brought in. So if you'd like to grab one of those to focus your prayer time, be sure we have new go cards. So make sure you grab some go cards so you can invite people. And also, 
I'm surprised nobody has asked me the million dollar question. Who's the business of the month? The business of the month is Border State Bank. Oh, the dinner? I think it was between 60 and 65. So a little less than last year, a lot more than the first year. But it was still, there was a lot of faces that we didn't see the year before. And of course, a lot of our regulars from just the church didn't come because they had family commitments and family commitments and other things. So we had a number from just the church body who would have normally been there who didn't. But it was still good because the people who were there were who needed to be there. And the people who were there had an amazing time. So until they got cool with the phone in their face. Or mashed potatoes. Or mashed potatoes. And the people we sent to go boxes too were extremely blessed. Yeah, we got some good reports from the to go boxes. Even my mom told me that one of her neighbors who didn't even come to the meal was just gushing about what a blessing the church is to the community and how amazing this is that somebody would do this. And I know Iona from the food bank was there and she just couldn't believe that we didn't take any money for it. She's like, how can you give people all of this and not... I said the church covers it. It's just what we do. What happens is nobody shows up. We just have a big huge meal on Sunday. <laughs> you know, it's, and every, everybody at the church gets it. Guess what you're getting for Christmas? You're getting a to-go box. You know, you know so that's just what we do. You know. Okay, but you haven't asked the other million. I'm surprised nobody's asked the other question. I was just going to make a statement about the 24 hours of prayer. Oh, it's 24 hours of prayer, James. <laughs> I wasn't even asking about that. That wasn't even my thing. Go ahead, James. Well, I just want to want to let everybody know that we we had our 24 hours of prayer and fasting, and that's that's a long time to be with a group of people who you don't live with on a regular basis, but it provided an opportunity. We had some some videos that we watched, um, sermons that we watched. Uh, there was there was praise and worship time like we do here with our three to four songs to, to lift up the the Lord and and thank Him for all the wonderful things He does. And you know there was individual prayer time. It was just it was really an opportunity where. The outside world more or less fell away, and I would recommend we're we're going to be doing it on a monthly basis, and I think every one of us, at some point or another, found a piece of what we need. For me, for my part, it, it was really amazing because the the very last sermon that we were watching had to do with what went wrong, where at the start of whatever you're doing, you have, oh God, I can't do this without you, and then as you start to get a little bit more successful, well, okay, this is going awesome because God is blessing me, and then at some point where you go, well, look at what I've done, it's at that point where the blessings start to fall away. And I hadn't considered that. That applies in everything. In relationships where you put God, like right at the beginning, God is a big part of this relationship. You need to keep that in there because as soon as you start going, yeah, baby, we got this, you and me against the world, and you leave God out, that's when you can start having problems and your relationship starts to fray. And it just that just blew my mind because I always wondered in my past, what went wrong? Well, that's what goes wrong. And that's how we finished out. That was our last sermon that we watched. And, you know, there was a lot of wonderful stuff leading up to that. But that was my point of, wow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what happened? Well, here's what happened. And there's something for everybody in that 24 hours that's just going to hit you between the eyes and, and just blow your, your hair back and go, wow. Yeah, and uh, and then pizza afterwards. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a great time, and, and you know, we, there was nine of us here, including uh, that includes William and Lucas came, and they stayed the whole time. 
And Wednesday night was, uh, Friday night was a special night because it was about, what do you say, maybe 10.30ish or so or 10 o'clock. I nudged James, he was over here, and uh, I kind of walked over and nudged James and looked. And William and Lucas were back in this corner over here, and they had their Bible open. They had this devotional book out. They were going through the Gospel of Matthew and figuring, okay, asking questions. Okay, why is this, this, or that? So it was just to see them also engaged, you know, you expect the Rogers and the Todds and the Richards and the myself and the Jameses. You expect the adults to come to be engaged. But and, and we had already talked. You know, if the kids. We were going to actually let them. Okay, come taste and see. And if at eleven o'clock you want to leave and go back over to the house and play video games, or whatever, that's fine. But they stayed the whole time. They they stayed the whole time and they were engaged the entire time. So that was that was such a blessing. Uh, and I do think uh, Roger brought up a good point. You know, I think every single one of us came in with a different expectation, but all of us left with something. You know, uh, all of us left with a, something that was just, I think, meaningful to us. Am I right, Roger? Yes, you are. I, I just want to add to that. You, again, God is blessing His church. James is for you. Praising the Lord. God is blessing his church. You normally don't see nine men spend 24 hours with God and each other. I'm sorry, I have not seen it in 58 years of living. And I praise the Lord, especially when you got two young men mm -hmm. that are here, and they were a blessing. Yeah. So just, and, you can and make it to, out, make it out. And not to embarrass them, but James got, you know, he, the whole thing was good for him, but something really, that last thing just grabbed him, right? Ben got his... Probably 15 minutes after you walked in the door, <laughs> you know. So, but it it, it took it, it. But you 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 saw some brokenness around the room. You saw men just saying, "Okay, it's it's time I have to let go of some things," you know. And it, it was just, it was just a great time. And you know, I think doing this once a month from now on and until the Lord says stop, and I don't think He will because He says we're supposed to pray and fast. So <clears throat> we'll be doing it every month. So. Uh, and the more people who come, the more possible be. Yes, sir, Mr. Richard. I was halfway through the program before I realized that I'm not really praising God. So when I started praising God, then my whole face lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more to say for that. I think that's all you need to say right there. That says it all. I find it kind of ironic that James referred to it as being hit between the eyes. I'll take that spiritual hit every time. Every time. Amen. <laughs> All right. So let's address the elephant in the room or the elephant outside that nobody asked me about. Why is there a big red mailbox right next to the I church? Know, I know. I know. I know too. <laughs> There is a big red mailbox right beside the church because I have a lock that I'm going to put on it so people can't come take the stuff out of it. But we are going to offer to the community as a whole. It is a prayer box. I ran into people in town who won't go to church, but they seem to always have a prayer request. They seem to always have an issue or a problem. So there are people who are afraid to come to church. There are people who have been hurt by church. There are people who say they can't come here because, well, they're Catholic or they're this. So that box out there creates anonymity. If they have a prayer request at any time of the day, they can come drop their prayer request in that box. And, at, and about four times every week, that prayer request will be prayed over. We'll go out on a Monday. We'll open it up. We'll pull all the prayer requests out. Uh, the women's ministry will pray over them on Wednesday. Wednesday night at 5.30, a prayer team will be in here praying over them. On Saturday, the men's Bible study, the men will pray over them before they start their Bible study. And on Sunday, the entire church will be able to pray over them. So at least for four times every week, that prayer request will be prayed over and brought to the throne. Uh, you know, we, not everybody's going to come in our doors, but there's a lot of people out there that are hurting and have issues and have problems. And sometimes they have no place to turn or they don't understand, or they're afraid of what they might find coming inside the doors. That box gives us an opportunity. I don't care if they write their name on it or don't write their name on it. We're just going to pray for whatever gets put in there. So, And I'm not, trust me, I'm also not naive enough to know that Kids may not put dumb things in there, but, but I'll, I'll take that risk for that one that says, I don't know where else to turn. So I'll take a bunch of graffiti from the high school kids and stupid comments for that one comment that says, I need help. So, so
So that's why that's there. Uh, I have a magnet downstairs I'm going to put over the front that says Badger Baptist Church, uh, like a small, or like a car door magnet. I'm going to put it over the front of it. So, uh, But that's what it's for. I'm so surprised. Nobody has, what, is it just normal for pastor to do crazy things that you just walk and you see something yeah. weird? So that's just normal, pastor, for being crazy again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very normal. James did ask the other day, so... Uh, and then last but not least, I'm going to go down to Peace Grenades probably tomorrow and see about getting an account there so we could have shirts and stuff made. And what we're going to do is not hold the stock in here, but you would go to there and tell them, okay, they would have our, our logo and everything on file. And then as you wanted a shirt, just, that way you can pick a color, you can pick whatever, and just have the Badger Baptist imprint put on there. And then we'll have a couple of things, like the one that I have that says, you know, they won't, we will on the back. We'll probably have a couple more different phrases that you could have placed on the back of your shirt uh, so that way you can go in there. And once we get all that settled down, I'll let you know how much it is so that we can go do it. It's so much easier to do it that way than it is to try to buy a whole bunch of shirts and make sure we have enough sizes for everybody. And and somebody doesn't like that color. That color doesn't look good on me or whatever. So you just go down there and pick what you want. So. Or it's like, oh, that, that's a man's cut, not a lady's cut. Or, yeah. So I'll let you guys work on that one. All right, Christian, if you could hit the first slide, please, so I can get through these announcements really fast. So we have Badger Ministry Network. We have the sign-up sheet out in the front for the school. Uh, uh, Badger Ministry Network with Global University. The first class listing is right there for Christ and the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, go ahead and sign up. I will get the price, and then we want to start this first of the year. And the only caveat we have, I haven't announced the date, is we want to make sure we make, meet the Saturdays that James is off because James wants to attend. So he gets every other Saturday off at Polaris, so we want to make sure it's on that rotation. So once we get, once he gets his new little little itty bitty micro calendar that they like to give you over their plastic over there, you know, with your different little colors on there, once you get that micro calendar, then we will set the actual date that we will start. So uh, next slide, please. And the big news today opens registration for Men's Advance 2020. We have a list out there. We are shooting $100 a person. We don't have to register today, but we have a sign-up sheet. Living a Legacy is the theme this year. Uh, Micah Mack is the main speaker this year. Uh, they have not released the breakout session titles yet, but there is a, a flyer on the back bulletin board back there and a sign-up sheet in the entryway. Uh, the dates are... Charlie, can you look at the bottom of that flyer right underneath your head there and tell me what... what the, yes. What the date is now there? It's March something. March 27th and March 28th, 2020. March 27th and March 28th, Friday and Saturday at Lake Geneva. Like I said, we're looking at $100 a person to uh, it'll either put us in the dorms we were in the year before or the dorms that we were in last year. We had nicer dorms, but no hot water. Give and take. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and you know what? Technically, it really wasn't a nicer dorm. It was just fit more people in it. Yeah, right. It fit everybody into one room instead of having us in two built, two rooms. Yeah. Like that. The other one had eight and eight. This one had all of us in, in one. And it had and it had two bathrooms in there, but no hot water. <laughs> <laughs> so some people actually walked to the other bathrooms <laughs> to use the showers. So, But it is, a, it is a blessing. It is an amazing time. So sign up. I think we already have like 13 names on the sheet already. So we'll figure out how we're going to do transportation and everything. Well, that's the ABS only has like one fifteen passenger van, so but we'll see what you know. It, it'll work out. It'll work out. So with that, we're going to get ready to go to our praise and worship. So uh, Christian, if you can go ahead and switch it over to the other one, and if you could turn off the front lights, please. Thank you. Again, we practice open worship, and if, if you happen to walk downstairs and you see one of the ceiling tiles off. Yeah. Uh, okay, they put it back on last night. Okay, there was a uh, uh, two gentlemen whose names I'm not going to say. One's, one's, one's initial start with Roger, and the other one I think starts with Todd. <laughs> We're very demonstrative in their praise and worship time, which is nothing wrong with that. I personally think, and I think I know exactly what song it was that it happened. <laughs> And I know exactly who it was, Roger Allen. The here. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we practice an open worship style. So if you feel like like shouting, shout. If you feel like raising your hands, raise your hands. 
If you feel like just coming to the front during more of the worship sets and just worshiping. If you feel like coming up to the front and worshiping even during the fast songs, you do it. Look at that. Roger's already, look at that. Roger's already stretching. He doesn't want to pull him. <laughs> I got a, I got a phrase. I got a, I got a word. I got a phrase. It's raise a hallelujah. Yes. This morning. Raise a hallelujah. So with that, Christian. <laughs>
With your hearts today, your presence is there. Hallelujah. 
just a little bit because we're going to capture this moment and right now I just feel I have a couple of things I want to ask you if you are right now okay and I, if you're watching online or whatever uh, if you are battling with like some sort of depression or anxiety if you're not afraid uh, I'd like you to come up to the front if you're battling with a physical ailment something physically in your body we got, we got to capture the moment well, if we are in his presence, we need to do what we're supposed to do in his presence. It's not time to play, it's time to pray. So if you are battling with those things, I want you to come forward. Uh, go ahead and just, we got, we got, we got room. We, we, we got room. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're, we're a church that prays, so. So if I could have, if I could have my deacons, well, my other deacon. <laughs> One join me, my other deacon, my board members, my my praying folks, Denise, Roger, can you come up and pray? And just gather around and 
Connect our prayers to their prayers because we have we can't let these moments pass us by. We can't let these I, I think of the woman with the issue of blood. You have a woman who is dealing with a physical issue and she was dealing with a mental and emotional issue at the same time. And she said, I can't let this moment pass me by. Jesus is here and I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna grab it. We would be wrong if we let this moment go by and did not grab what Jesus had to offer for us right now. It would be wrong of us. It would be a disservice to his presence if we didn't grab a hold of it while he, while he walked by. So if you're out there in the audience, if you just extend your hand in agreement, if you are a believer and, a, and you have faith that God can move mountains, that God can heal, let's watch God do what God does best. Because he is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He said, I will give you peace. My peace I give to you. Not depression, not anxiety. That is a promise, and he keeps his promises. He said, I send my word and I heal their diseases. That is a promise. He, he promised healing. Heavenly Father, right now, we just, in, in, in stretched out arms, we just lift these brothers and sisters up to you that are, are battling with, with a, a brokenness, whether it be in their body, whether it be in their mind, whether it be in their soul. Lord, we just pray right now that you bring your healing power to them. Spirit, soul, and body. Lord, a 100% healing. Lord, we just pray right now that you have clear minds, clear thoughts, clear feelings. Lord, we just pray right now that bodies are being healed. Bodies are being made whole. Lord, we just thank you right now. That your healing power is moving through us. From the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet. Lord, we just thank you right now. Lord, we thank you right now that you are moving, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now that we are in your presence. And we're going to capture this moment. Lord, and we're, going to, we're going to tell others that I met a God who healed. Right now, Lord, we just feel it coming through our bodies. Lord. We just feel it coming into our souls. And we just feel it coming into our minds. Coming into our hearts, Lord. Healing us from our wounds. Healing us from our past. Healing us from the burdens that we've been taking, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord, that you are moving in our midst. Lord, we just worship you. We just worship you, Lord. We just worship you. That you are doing those things that you say, Lord. That you are keeping your promises, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Now, if you believe that, give him praise. Give him praise for what he has done. Not for what he will do, but he has done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of it. It is a promise. He's not a promise breaker. He is a promise keeper. Yes, Lord. If we didn't believe he could do it, why are we here? We all got better things we could be doing on a Sunday afternoon. My team plays the Ravens today. We all got better things. We can all justify other things to do. But if we didn't believe he could do what he could do, then why be here? But if you're here, I have to think that somewhere inside of you believe that he did everything he said he could do. Come on now. That you believe that he is a way maker. Yeah. A miracle worker. Yeah. A promise keeper. Yeah. The light in the darkness. Yeah. Woo! Come on. How many of you have experienced darkness this week? Ah. I can raise my hand on that. I can raise my hand on that. But he is not a promise. He is a light in the darkness. Amen. You know what he said? He said, and I want to make you a light into the world. He doesn't want to be the only light. He wants you to become a light. That's a promise. So we're going to go right into our, our corporate prayer time, and then we'll take up our offering after that. You guys don't mind when we change it up this little bit, do you? Not at all. We're not giving you traditional. It's his show. It's his show. It is his show. <laughs> you know, today, uh, I just want to I want to put this on the prayer list, and I know it's kind of selfish, but today is a very special day for me. And uh, today is December 1st, 2019. On December 1st, 2016, I was unanimously voted in as pastor of this church. Yay! 
Well, I've been pastor here for three years. Sometimes it felt like 30. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like just yesterday. Amen. And we're praising God for whatever, how many more years God has for us. Yeah. Amen. So uh, I'd just like to thank you guys for that. So I just want to throw that out there before I forget. Uh, we do know that we have to pray for our business of the month, which is Border State Bank. Another praise report. And a praise report. My brother rang the bell of hope yesterday at Mayo Clinic. Yes. Finished his uh, radiation treatment. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. All right. Any other prayer requests or praise reports? Miss Hill. Um, I have had an overwhelming urgency to pray for my grandchildren. Yes. Their safety. Definitely. We're going to keep that one going. Big, Thanks. huge praise report. I, I said that when I had my accident, that the Lord had a blessing for me, because <coughs> that's what he does. And I don't know who all was there this past Thursday, but my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandchildren showed up over at the community center, and we had about a half hour of no tension, just just love. Yes. Yeah. And that has been something that you know we've we've talked about numerous times and this huge blessing yep. happened. And then being able to spend twenty four hours with Lucas mm -hmm. and just in cloistered in prayer and worship and it was just it was just an amazing time, and I just feel like, well, I've had a lot of junk happen, and now the Lord is just restoring, just like, yep, just like Brother Harkey prophesied over me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. And back to the song. He's God's keeping His promises. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Who else? Anybody else? Let's see. Right over here, bud. My grandma has bone cancer, and it's going out into her knees, so mm -hmm. she would like all her. What's your name? Jerry Nelson. Jerry? All right, yeah, we will definitely pray for that. Yeah. Ms. Carrie? Praise report for the Sandman family for all the support that they received, not only through Barrett Baptist, but also the donations for the Thanksgiving meal. The church raised $368. I rounded it up. And 367 and change. $368 were collected at the community mill for that. Uh, a prayer request for uh, a numerous friends. They don't believe in, in anything. They're just they're atheists. And I just would like them to see the way. And, you know, Parker Corbin is one of the main ones that I'm thinking about right now, and his little friend, uh, Gail. They're both atheists and they're going through some troubles. You know, they're a young couple. Yeah. And they're just going through a lot right now. Well, the best way for them to see the Lord is to see him in you. So, who else? Who else? But we will definitely pray for that. Patty. Oh, oh. Yes. Then I'll come to you, Todd. Pray for my friend who has cancer. Yes. Todd. I request over my upcoming job decision. Yes. That's going to come up here pretty soon. If things happen tomorrow that are supposed to happen. <laughs> hey. We can remember the North Region Pregnancy Center. Yes. Thank you. Miss Denise. Um, 
Give me prayers for Dallas. Uh, he's gotten pneumonia, which is, uh, pushed back his time to start his chemo. Kept keeps being pushed back and pushed back. And uh, just pray that he gets healthy enough for that. And um, I haven't heard now he might have started this weekend, but just to continue to mm -hmm. um, keep him in prayer. Definitely. And then I'd like to ask for prayer for my sister Coco. And um, she, uh, in 2000, she got encephalitis, and it affected the, her short-term memory and the part of her brain that is the seat of your emotions and your fight and flight. And um, so she's, she's made some recovery, but she's kind of stuck where she can remember things for about 15 minutes, and then it's new to her again. Mm -hmm. And um, she's also just um, gets waves of this incredible depression that comes over her and every wrongdoing that was ever done to her in her <coughs> mind that she, she can remember. And some of it actually happened during her illness um, that these things, they just spike up and... Um, just that she could be released from that and oh, no. <clears throat> and know God. Yes. to make the decision about whether she wants to have chemo or not. Right. And also, can we pray for Pastor Glenn back in California? He had a massive heart attack, Pastor, yeah. at the house in the uh, yeah. yeah, I played a song yesterday. Well, it was a spoken word thing from our youth convention, and that was Pastor Glenn's son who did that. Uh, Pastor Glenn Bartow, he pastors a church called The House in Modesto, Modesto, California. It's another one of our sister churches from the church that we came from. Uh, very large congregation. He just had a major heart attack mm -hmm. the other night. He's still in, still in the hospital. <coughs> Thank you. 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 Anybody else? Uh, yes, I, I'd like a prayer for myself, please. Um, what I, I I try and do a lot of um, a lot of things out of you know, out of my work, mm -hmm. and as is written, and everybody knows it's going to happen. I'm heavily under attack constantly. Yes, and um, things don't don't always go that. It, there's a lot of smoothness out there, but you know you've always mm -hmm. got the ones that. Or don't attack you. Right. I, I just pray for the strength and mm -hmm. that to go on. I'm... Definitely. Definitely. Anybody else? I just I just want to have us pray for Marion with me being out of work right now and on the short term disability. She has taken a lot on in the financial realm, and I just, for her to have some peace and comfort and assurance that because the Lord provides for us, we'll get through this okay. <coughs> and, yes. uh, and of course, that we, we uh, come out of this, you know, because God's this way, we can come out of it better than we are. Definitely. So. Most definitely. All right. <clears throat> 
nobody else, we will go ahead and start praying. Uh, just join your prayers in with mine, and we will agree, and we will watch God do amazing things. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord, for our opportunities to come to you with our prayers, with our petitions, with our praises, Lord, that we could just come and just lay them at your feet, Lord. And, and at times, sometimes, Lord, we could just come and lay ourselves at your feet and just find comfort and peace in your presence. Lord, we lift up Border State Bank, our business of the month, Lord, that you will bless their, their business, Lord, that you will uh, cause them to be a blessing to others. Lord, we just pray right now for their employees, that anybody who is affiliated with them, Lord, through, through employment, Lord, whatever issues and problems that they may have, that you will make yourself real to them. Lord, we just pray blessings and a covering on them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up our brother Bert, Lord, we just praise you that he has finished his radiation, Lord, that you're going to keep strengthening his body and bringing him on a path to healing. Lord, we lift up Helen and her grandkids, Lord, we just pray for safety and care, Lord, we just pray that, that you will give her a peace, Lord, that you will provide safety and care for these grandkids, that you will open up the right doors and you will, the right decisions will be made, that hurts will be healed, yes. Lord, and, and a family can move forward and strengthen and unity in you. Lord, we give you praise for James and, and the time that he had with Nikki and, his, and her husband and, and the grandkids, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you have taken something that seems like a disaster and turned it into a blessing. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the time that James had with, in prayer and fasting with Lucas and the time that he had to bond with Lucas on a spiritual level. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we lift up Jerry's grandma, Lord, and who's dealing with lung cancer. We just pray right now a prayer of healing, a prayer of strength. Yes. Lord, we just pray right now that you enter into her life, Lord, wherever station in life she may be. Lord, we just pray right now that you make yourself real to her, Lord, and you bring healing and strength to her body. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just give you praise for the outpouring of blessings from this church, Lord, for a family in need, Lord. Yes. They may not believe the way we believe. They may not be the, the same type of who we may want to believe them or want, want them to be, Lord. Yes. But, Lord, they are, they, are, they are our neighbors. And, Lord, you said that we should love our neighbors as ourselves, Lord. And we yes. just thank you that this is a church that gives yes. and is a church that wants to bless people no matter who they are or where they are. Yes. Lord, we just lift up Brother Keith, Lord, and we just pray for for strength and guidance for him to be a living epistle to his friends, Lord. Yes. That he could be the be the example, Lord, to his friends so they could see the Lord through him. He could be a city set on a hill so when they're in their struggles and their hard times, Lord, yes. that though they may conf confess to be atheists, Lord, but they could see something in him. Yeah. They could see the difference. They could see in him something that they lack. Yeah. Lord, and let them have a desire to reach out yes. to him and let him have the words to say to them, Lord. Lord, we just lift up Patty's friend with cancer. Lord, we just pray strength and blessing on them, Lord. Lord, you are, your name is above all names. Or just like the yes. song said, your name is above cancer. Yes, God. Lord, and as your name, every knee will bow. That means cancer has to bow at your yes. name. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Lord, right now, and in Jesus' name, we just lift up Patty's friend. Lord, we just say this cancer has to bow. James's grandma, her cancer has to bow yes. at your name. Yes. Lord, we just lift yes. up Todd and the decisions that he's going to have to make within the next couple of days. Lord, that you will give him the wisdom and the courage to make the decisions. Lord, not based on... On, on, on what his his flesh may desire, Lord, but what he knows is your calling and your open door, Lord. Give him the prophetic insight to see the door that you have opened for him. Yeah. Lord, we lift up the North Region Pregnancy Center, Lord, and for all that they do for yes. for young mothers, Lord, and, and, and for the, 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 the proclamation of life, Lord, we just pray right now that you continue to provide people to assist and provide people to go in there and yes. lift them up and, and, and allow them to continue to function. Lord, we just pray for, uh, we just give you praise for Carrie, Lord, and, and his, her, her ability to have people around her that were able to, to minister to her while she was dealing with these panic attacks, Lord, and she was able to come through them. But we just lift up Dallas and dealing with pneumonia, Lord, and, and the issues of his chemo being moved and, and the uncertainty, Lord. We just pray right now that you give him a solid foundation and a, and a certainty. We just pray healing again on his body, Lord. Yes. Lord, and that, yes. that he will start to see your hand at work as things yes. start to come together in his life. Lord, for Denise's sister, Coco, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that, that after dealing with this encephalitis and these after effects, Lord, that you said that, that you healed their disease. It didn't say that you just took some out and left some in. Lord, but you will you will start to release her from the after effects. Yes. You will start to heal her mind, yes. heal her heart, Lord. Yes. And that in all this, that she will come to know you in a deeper, more intimate way. Yes. Yes. Lord, we lift up Alexandria and, the, and her tooth that got chipped, Lord, and this infection that she's battling, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you give her the strength to, to withstand until yes. she can get in to see a doctor. Lord. We pray, Lord, that, that your will will be done, Lord. If she walks into the doctor and she has been healed, that the doctor will recognize it. That only God could have done this. Yes. yes. Lord, we just lift up Tammy and the decision that she has to make, Lord, yes. with this devastating cancer yes. diagnosis. We just pray, Lord, the strength to make the decisions, yes. Lord. We just pray for the courage for the family. 
Lord, we just pray a peace that passes all understanding yes. of her situation. Lord, for Pastor Glenn and his family dealing with a heart attack, Lord, you are a God who heals. And we just pray for strength for his family. Yes, God. Lord, for David's nephew and, and his girlfriend who are, are, are dealing with this new pregnancy, Lord, we just pray for strength for that family. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just pray that, that, you will, that, that you will put people in their lives who will show them a godly way, Lord. Show them a way that they can walk in strength and they can walk in peace. Lord, we just pray for Larry. Lord, and yes. for his ministry, Lord. Thank Some people Lord. call it work, but we call it ministry, Lord, at, yes, God. at Marvin's Windows. Lord, we just pray that you give him the strength uh-huh. to withstand the battles. You give him the strength First to daily put on his whole armor yes. so that he can withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy, Lord. Okay. We just thank you, Lord, that you are opening up doors. You are opening up hearts. You are That you, that soil is being prepared for your word to come in there. And, Lord, uh, it would not surprise me, Lord, if within the next year that we hear a revival breaking out at Marvin's Windows. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we just pray for Mary, and Lord, we just pray that she would have strength to help with the family, Lord, as they're going through this struggle, Lord. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just pray that, that this burden will be will be easy for you, Lord. We know that your anointing will break the yoke and it will ease the burden. Lord, we just pray your anointing and your Holy Spirit to, to saturate Mary right now in a peace that the Lord will provide, and, and a peace that the Lord is healing James, her husband, Lord, and a peace that this is just the season. This is not a lifetime. But we just thank you, Lord. We just give you praise for what you're doing. Lord. We just give you praise that we, we can sense that we are in your presence, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us this opportunity. We just ask you, Lord, to continue to bless us. Bless each person who has had a prayer request. Bless each person who might have been afraid to say what they're dealing with, Lord. We just pray right now that you heal hearts. You bring restoration. You bring reconciliation, Lord. For those who are watching, Lord, that you will continue to bless and move in their lives. Yes. But we just give you praise and glory for everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Marvin's place. Marvin. All right, Lucas. We are going to get ready to extend our worship into our offering time. Something the Lord has been dealing with me about recently is. We, 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 and I've said it, and it's not that I've said it in error, it's that we pray for a harvest, but we have to have, we have to plant seed to get a harvest. So we, so seed to get a harvest, but you can't have seed without first having a harvest. Does that make sense? Somebody had to have a harvest for you to have a seed. Right. And then when you sow your seed, you have a harvest. And guess what your harvest does? It allows somebody else to have seed. So when we when we sow our seed today in this offering, when we when we give our seed identity, don't just give an identity for yourself, but know that. Remember what we talked about in the calling. It, it is missional. Your seed is missional. It's a harvest that's going to touch your life and somebody else's. Right. So that when your harvest comes in, the first thing that you'd be saying is, God, who is this for? Lord, who do you want me to bless? Who's this for? Show them to me, Lord. So then you could give them a harvest, and they would have a seed, so then they could get a harvest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to sow seed into your kingdom, Lord. We just pray right now that as we receive our harvest, Lord, that we will use it to, to bless others. Lord, we thank you that we are, we, are, we are faithful in our giving, Lord. And we ask that you bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you watching online, if you would like to give, the address is right along the bottom of the screen. Badger Baptist Church, P.O. Box 127, Badger, Minnesota, 56714. It's right on the bottom of the screen. Now I see how the weathermen do it. Slides. You, you skip that one. We already just right now. I know. I put them in the system before I 
felt the Holy Spirit say, no, we need to make a change. <laughs> so, as you see on the graphic here, as we go into uh, the month of December and our, our Christmas time, uh, we don't normally do things the way everybody else does them. Uh, we're, not, we're not known to be traditional and bound by it. So, uh, for the month of December, this is what I really was praying about. And I, I watched a bunch of messages and everything's leading to this, this concept. And so I titled this month, and what I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to, to talk about, is shock the system. Because that's what Christmas was. We think of the cute little baby. We think of the cute little stories. We think of, oh, the nice little donkey ride that Mary had when she was pregnant. You know, We watch the cute little cartoons. We, we see Charlie Brown tell Linus, or Linus tell Charlie, whoever it was, he told him it's all about Jesus. We see all the cute things, right? But we don't realize that God had a bigger plan in mind than just have a baby born in a manger. Okay? There was a bigger thing at play, and this thing, God, God's whole intent was to shock the system. It was to take the system that was established and turn it upside down. And if we don't understand that, then we'll never fully understand Christmas. We'll never fully understand what Jesus was all about. So today we're going to start, and we're going to talk about shocking the system. And today's going to be maybe a little brief, but just an informational. This is the Sermon Lane Foundation. But I would recommend that if you come for the next couple of Sundays, maybe bring a seatbelt. Maybe bring an extra bottle of water. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Maybe, maybe, bring, a, maybe bring some skill-toed shoes, because for some of you, maybe you like the system. And you don't want it shocked. Maybe maybe you're okay with the system. So you may want to bring some steel toe shoes because there may be some 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 toe stomping as well. So let's talk about systems. Those who are here for the current passing, they got to hear a bunch of messages that, that kind of go along these lines. And we we operate in a system. Okay? We have a system here in the United States of America, and I hate to tell people, and even the, the, one of the speakers I've listened to got it technically wrong. In the United States of America, we do not have a democracy. We have a representative republic, right? We, we vote for people to represent us in Washington. You don't necessarily have a say in all the, all the laws that are passed. You vote for somebody to then hopefully vote your, your way. You have a representative in Congress, right? Your congressman, your senator. Those people. Uh, we, we, we have a nation that is governed by a president, right? That, and it has checks and balances. You have the president, you have the, the, the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch, right? So you have checks and balances. That is the system we live in. And sadly, the church, because we operate in that system in the United States of America, the church operates in that exact same system. So you have checks and balances in the church. You have a pastor. You have a board. You have a membership. Right? So you create checks and balances. We, we say we want to do something. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let's form a committee, just like they do in Congress. right? We have, we have the Judiciary Committee. You have the Oversight Committee. You have all these committees, right? So we'll form a committee, and then we'll determine if it is feasible for us to do this. That is the system we have. Other places have, the, the Greeks had a pure democracy where everybody had a vote. Everybody got a say in everything. And you see what happened to the Greeks. That system no longer exists. You have people who live in communism where you have an elite group who has a say in anything and everybody else must bow to that group. But then you have a different system. You see, Jesus came to institute a different system. That's why we call it a shock to this system. Jesus came to bring a new system in place. And I like what Pastor Ron said, and I'll just repeat it, and I won't take credit for it. Pastor Ron said, Jesus did not come to be a religious leader. He did not come to institute a religion. Those who want to say that Christianity is a religion are living in the, in the earth. They, they've taken what Jesus said and put it into their system. See, Jesus came to do one thing. 
to build a bridge back to what was original intent. Through the cross, he built the bridge to what, the way things were supposed to be. Okay? He came to reestablish a system. All right? And that's where we're going to talk about today. We only have a couple of scriptures. There may not be a lot of shouting and jumping and running, but it's <laughs> we, we're going to lay some groundwork. Isaiah chapter 9. Quite possibly a very famous, famous Christmas scripture. You read this all the time for Christmas. Isaiah chapter 9. When you have it, say amen. 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 <laughs> Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's normally what we read, but you see I skipped the middle line. Yes, you did. We normally read, when we read this and we quote it, this is what we read. We, we remember the his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We remember, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, in a little manger in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. But there's a line right there in the middle that says, and the government will be on his shoulders. Not the church. Uh-oh. Not a religious institution. Not a code of conduct. Not a list of rules and regulations, not a constitution. The Bible is not a constitution. It is not a we the people in order to form a more perfect religion vow to follow these rules. That's not what it is. He said, this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, this Prince of Peace, this everlasting Father, this child, this baby, the government is going to be on his shoulders. He came to establish a system. A system of governance. And we could sing all the O Holy Nights, Silent Nights, So Come All Ye Faithfuls, and We Three Kings. May we wish you a Merry Christmas, whatever we want to do. But if we don't understand that he came not to just be a little baby in a manger and for us to sing cute songs, he came to establish a government. He came to establish a system that overrides the world systems. Verse 7 says this, Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with justice and judgment from that time forward even forever. So he didn't just come to establish a system that could be overthrown by coup. Look at what's going on in Hong Kong right now. See, China came in and they took over Hong Kong, right? And they established their system. And the young people in Hong Kong say, we don't like your system. So we're going to overthrow it. God says, I have a system and it's going to be established and it'll last forever. You can't overthrow it. You either hop on board or you don't. It's that simple. You can think you're going to overthrow. You can pass a law that says you can't pray in school, but you can't overthrow my system. See, let me give you some examples real fast of how God's system cannot be overthrown because the world tries. The world system tries to overthrow his system all the time, don't they? So, so what do we have? We have Christmas right now, right? Merry Christmas, we say. And then we say, people get, well, you can't say Christmas because it has Christ in it. So we're going to overthrow your system. And we're going to establish our own system. So you have to say happy holidays. Even though holidays is, is a derivative of holy days. So God says, okay, you want to overthrow my system? I'll still interject myself in there in the first place. So we say, oh, we're going to do you one better. We're going to say, Merry Xmas. We'll take you completely out of the equation. You know what God says? X is the Greek word chai. Chai means Christ. So you still put it in there. Preach it now. Woo. So you think you're going to overthrow my system, but you can't. 
I saw a thing that we say, we say we can't say Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving was originally meant to give thanks to God, right? When they first established it, it was to give thanks to God. So, you know, yeah, people say, we don't say thanks, we say, we say Friendsgiving. <laughs> happy, happy, happy Friendsgiving. But my Bible tells me that, that no greater love has a man than a man who would lay down his life for a friend. And who did that? God. So who is the greatest friend you can have? <laughs> so even though you say you're going to take me out of it, guess what? I'm still in it. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a guy in a lab coat sitting in a science room somewhere, and he says, he says we can't say BC anymore because BC means before Christ, right? So we can't say that because we're elevated in our knowledge and our thinking. We're enlightened. So we say before the common era, BCE. Well, what marks the common era? The birth, the birth of Christ. <laughs> so even though you say it and you try to do it, you can't remove my system from your stuff. Mm. My system is established and it will last forever. Hallelujah. So our option is either we get on board with it or we get left behind. Mm. That is what Christmas was. <clears throat> Christmas was you can keep trying, you can keep doing, but I'm going to do something that's going to rock the entire history and fabric of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shock your system. Matthew chapter 4. I told you guys, it wasn't supposed to get preached. It was supposed to be information. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4. Let me give you some background here. Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist. The heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit came down. And it landed on Jesus and God said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Correct? Yes. We all know that story. And immediately following that, Jesus was sent to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Alright? Do we know why Jesus was sent to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? Well, let me tell you. Back in Genesis, God created a system. And he called that system Eden. He put heaven on earth. And then God said, I need somebody to manage my system. Genesis tells us there was no rain on the earth because there was no man to manage it. So he made Adam. And he put Adam and he says, you're going to run this with my system. I'm going to give you all my authority to run this, this garden. And then one day as it happened, a snake, put, a snake started talking to Eve, right? And she took a bite and she said, hey, hey Adam, have a bite too. This is pretty good stuff. And as soon as Adam took that bite, what did he do? He forfeited his right to run God's system. Mm. He gave the right to run God's system to the devil. That's right. And so God said, okay, then you know what? You are now the prince of the power of the air. I go up back to heaven. But you know what it also says? It says, even before the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. God already had a plan in place to reestablish his system. Because, right, you can't overthrow his system. Okay, I'll move to the background. And I'll start putting those chess pieces in place until my system is established. So Jesus goes off into the wilderness. Why is this important? Because Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. What does he tempt Jesus with? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Three temptations. Jesus passed all three. Adam failed all three. So at that moment, at that moment, see we look to the crucifixion, but at that moment Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm in charge here now. See, before you were dealing with surrogates of mine, now you get to deal with me. And his systems are of yourself. So that's where we pick this story up in verse 12. Matthew 4, verse 12. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in, pit, in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and, and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region 
and shadow death, light was dawn. So Isaiah was already telling us that light came. Something came. Something new. There was darkness and now light there. And this is what Jesus says in verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the church of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the, the Christian religion is at hand. No, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heaven's systems are now at hand. Heaven's rules are at hand. You are looking at something different. You are looking at something different. Jesus said the kingdom is at hand. And if we go back through and we look through all the scriptures, that's what we see. We see Jesus always talking about the kingdom. The kingdom is life. The kingdom is life. He was instructing us on something that we don't talk about. I, I love what Pastor Ron was saying, one of the messages we listened to yesterday. That this is the problem that the church has. Is Jesus spent his entire three and a half years of ministry talking about a kingdom. And there's churches that have been established for a hundred years that hasn't said kingdom once. Yeah. Mm. Preach it now. Yeah. He came to shock a system. He didn't just come to be another person who said good things and went about healing all who were oppressed. He healed all who were oppressed and went about healing people because he had a reason. He was bringing people into his kingdom, kingdom into his system. Mm -hmm. Back to Isaiah, what does it say? It says in verse 7, you didn't know I was going to make you jump around, did you? <laughs> Isaiah 9, verse 7. It says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Okay, let's look at that. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The Bible tells us, and we heard Pastor Ron say this, that Jesus was born in the fullness of time. Correct? What that means is, is Jesus, if you, if you, when you come to this class on the Synoptic Gospels, you'll get a very big lesson on this. That Jesus was born in the fullness of time. There was a reason why Jesus was born at the time that he was born. It wasn't happenstance, it wasn't anything else. There's a thing called Pax Romana that was in play at the time. Those of you who take history, or have taken history, or are still in school, you should know what Pax Romana is. It means that there was a Roman peace. You could travel freely anywhere within the Roman Empire. Okay? They had a common language at the time. Uh, the, 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 the Roman Empire was ruled by a common language. So there was a unity. So the message could move from place to place in, in an easy way. So the fullness of time. And then also, there was an established system that was the perfect system for Jesus to come in conflict with. The Roman system. Rome, when Rome would conquer, right? And now let's look. The Roman system is gone, right? Do we have, is Rome, is Italy governed by a Caesar? No. But Jesus' system knows the land. But see, when Rome would conquer, what Rome did differently, if you remember in your Old Testament, you scholars in here, when the Babylonians would conquer, they would conquer this land, they were going to conquer you. And they would conquer you, and they would take all of you and round you up, put chains on you, and move you to their land, right? And make you slaves and servants and those type of things. This land would then be desolate. And everybody would be gone. You know what the Romans did? If this was Rome over here, okay, and you were Israel over here, when Rome conquered Israel, they said, you guys can stay there. And, oh, and you know what? You can worship in your temple all you want, but uh, Larry, stand up, please. I'm sure he can. <laughs> <laughs> but Larry is my governor. He represents me. I'm Caesar. So Larry, you got to pack your family. You need to move over here. Go sit over there. <laughs> so they left them in their place, but they put a governor. They put a governor in charge. So you guys, you can still worship in your temple. Will you get out of line? No mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Now, Larry isn't going to go worship in your temple. You know what Larry's going to do? Larry's going to build a temple to Apollos. And he's going to start lavishing people who like Larry things. I want to hang out with Larry with gifts. So now while you're going to the temple, you're saying, they get better gifts at their temple than I get over here. They got mashed potatoes at his temple. I'm going over there. And eventually, the area would become Romanized. Okay? So Jesus says he comes, the Bible says that Jesus came at the fullness of time to establish his kingdom, his system. And to shock that system, you know what Jesus did? He used their system. So he says, I'm going to conquer this area, but you know what I mean? I'm going to find a fisherman over there. I'm going to establish him as a governor, a disciple. There you go back to your seat. I'm done ruling. You're done ruling here. You're done ruling here. Because here's the difference. Here's the difference. In God's system, see, in God's system, God says, Larry, we're taking territory today. You're a good governor. So I'm going to plant you at first ship at Marvin's Windows. That is your new territory now. I'm claiming that territory for my own, and you're the governor. Mm. Those people at Marvin's may still do the things that they used to do, but you're going to start showing them something different. Amen. Way to go. He says, Roger, I'm putting you at ODC. Mm. I'm claiming that territory. See, we pray for God to put us in the place where we want to be. If you remember, Pilate did not want to be in Israel. Right. He had no desire to be there. If we look in history, he didn't want that was not a prime assignment. It was a desert with a bunch of fanatics. He didn't want to be there. But he understood that when the king says, that's where I'm placing you, that's where you go. So we pray and we pray and we pray to go, I only want to work with people who believe like I believe. I don't want to work with people who are like me. I, I, because then my life will be so much easier. Yes, it would. Well, who told you that the kingdom work was going to be easy? No one. <laughs> God's going to plant you where he needs you. I have taken Polaris and I'm putting you there. I have claimed that area for my own. Now, the people at Polaris may still look like Polaris people. They may not look like Jesus people. But it is your responsibility through my power to govern that region. Amen. Because I'm going to shock the system. This is the true story of Christmas. More than just a little baby in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. More than just three dudes traveling from afar off to come give them some gifts. Right. More than just pretty songs. More than just decorated trees. It's about establishing a government system that rules the way we live. I put on the board here a quote from Dr. Tony Evans. The kingdom agenda, God's system is the visible manifestation of the comprehensive rule of God over every area of life. That is a shock to the system. Because the system says, God, I want you to rule on my life Sunday between 11 and 1. Uh, no. <laughs> Sunday's doing 11 to 1. That works for me. Yeah. <laughs> that was the system back then, right? You only had to worship on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> you do whatever you want to every other day. But on the Sabbath, you have to set that apart for me. And then once a year, you bring a sacrifice in and we'll cover all the garbage you did all year long. <coughs> but he says, no, 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 no. I'm coming to establish a new system. A new kingdom. Christmas is about an overthrow of a government. Christmas is a coup d'etat. Christmas isn't just the birth of a baby. It's a coup. He came in and said, no, no. This is what I came in to do. The visible manifestation of the comprehensive rule of God over every area of your life. You can't call me a citizen that you're one of my citizens and on Monday you're acting a fool. Amen. 
Because my kingdom says every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Every day that ends in white. Every day that ends in white. <laughs> Every area. Constantly. That is a shock to our system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because our system wants to do what our system has always done. <coughs> our system wants to play. We talked. We, we, we made these comments. Michael, come here. <laughs> I love you, Michael. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Before he... <laughs> yeah. We talked about this during the prayer and fasting. And Michael is a perfect example. Michael holds dual citizenship. Michael is both an American citizen and a Canadian citizen. He has dual citizenship. We have too many Christians wanting to walk around with dual citizenship. That works for Michael. That's a natural thing. That works for Michael. But in a spiritual sense, what God is trying to do, God says, no, 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 no. It's my system or no system. There is no dual citizenship here. Because a double-minded man, a dual citizenship man, is unstable in all his ways. I'd rather you be one or the other or I'm going to spit you out. <laughs> See, when he says it, that's what he's saying. He says, either you follow my system or you follow their system. There is no halfway. There is no, I get my praise on on Sunday, and I get my freak on on Monday. It doesn't work. You know what that means? That means you are unstable in all your ways. That means you are a candidate to be spit out. Now, for Michael being, in the natural sense, dual citizenship works for you, right? It works. In the spiritual sense, it can't. Michael, okay, we all love Michael. Do we all love Michael? Yeah, yeah. yeah Michael. For years, Michael struggled with dual citizenship in a spiritual sense. He had one part of his body wanting to do one thing, but he had the call of the king inside of him saying, no, i got something better for you. But my kingdom is an all or nothing proposition. It's an everyday issue. Thank you, Michael. And my fear is, and I, I plan on writing this for the newspaper, and that's why I, I gave some people some warning. Joey wanted me to write in the column. I said, okay. I don't know if you want to print what I have on my heart right now because it's not going to be popular because I think this is our problem. We talked about this, and I wrote it on the board on Friday night. Why does Roseau County have the highest uh, divorce rate, highest suicide rate, highest drug rate, highest alcohol rate in the tri-county area per capita in the state of Minnesota? And yet at the same time, it has the highest church rate. Because it doesn't have the highest kingdom rate. That's why. Amen. Because it has too many people in too many churches wanting to play dual citizenship. Amen. Mm. Wow. Right. Dallas. And Christmas was about creating a new citizenship. It was about creating a new bloodline. In Peter's writing, it's about creating a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You Something different. Something that would shock the system. Because how could a, a small Norwegian man from up in Badger be considered royal? Swede. A Swede. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> a Swede be considered royal. <laughs> but he says, I have a better system. Luke chapter 17. Keep your finger on Isaiah 9. On Isaiah 9, though. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to land this plane here in just a sec. <coughs> Luke 17. Starting in verse 20, when you have a savior. This is what Luke writes, what Jesus says. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he, being Jesus, answered them and said, 
The kingdom of God does not come with observation. You can't sit there and you can't go up into your attic and take a jug of water and sit up there for a year and try to figure out when it's going to come. What time or date it's going to come. You can't do that. 21 says, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. So the kingdom of God is here. And now the kingdom of God is where? In you. Because what I'm about to do is going to shock everything. Because it's going to take a kingdom and it's going to put it inside you. So why could Isaiah, back in Isaiah 9, 7, say it will be a kingdom with no end? Because the kingdom that he established on day one lives inside of you. And prayerfully, it will live inside my kids, and it will send to the next generation, and to the next generation, and to the next generation, until Amen. Jesus comes and we all live together with him. Amen. Mm, praise the Lord. A kingdom with no end. But now, what, do we, what happens? What happens? How do we get this kingdom in us, you say? And this is where I'm going to start wrapping up this this, this, this thing and this, this groundwork. But this was just foundation, okay? This wasn't preaching, this was foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I must have missed something. <laughs> <laughs> so when we accept Jesus, this is my problem. See, this is when I hear people say, well, I don't have to accept him because he's already accepted me. No, when we accept him, we are accepting his rule in our life. We are, we are saying, I accept your kingship. You are now king. Mm. Because, see, what happens is, is when we say something dumb like, I don't have to accept him because he's already accepted me, then what we're saying is Jesus is a vicious conquering king. We're putting Jesus with Nebuchadnezzar. He died those through a rough shot, and I'll just take wherever I want. So I've already accepted you. And so since I've already accepted you, you don't have to accept me, Stacy, but I've accepted you. So now, that would, you know what that's called? That's called slavery. So we do have to accept them. So he says, he says, James, I have a kingdom and I want you to be a part of it. I've already paid the price for your entry. Do you want it or not? And James says, yes, I do. <laughs> and then James says, I renounce my citizenship to this world and I accept my citizenship to your kingdom. And then like the Apostle Paul says, and I will now walk as an ambassador of your kingdom to wherever you send me to. So when we accept Christ, this is what's happening. Number one, we're saying, we want you to be the king and rule in our life. Notice the word, it is rule. It is not offer suggestions. It is not give advice. It is rule. We want you to, number one, rule in our life. Number two, we want you to rule over our life. See, a good king watches over his kingdom. A good king watches over what's going on. Number three, lastly, we want you to rule through our life. Keith asked for friends of his to, to find Christ. The only way they can find his system is when you start allowing his system to start ruling through you. Why, why did so many people risk jumping over a wall in Berlin to get shot? Because they saw a system that was better than the system that they saw before. The system that they were living in in East Berlin, compared to what was going on in West Berlin, right? You had communism and you had democracy. Why were people traversing that wall and being shot? Same as what's going on in Hong Kong right now. Tiananmen Square. Why did a boy in Tiananmen Square in October of, what was that, 1988 or 87? 89. 89? Stand in the middle of the street facing out a tank because he saw a system that was better than the system he had. Why did that young man in North Korea a few months ago run the border and get shot, what was it, like seven times? He got shot as he was fleeing across the border because he looked at the system that he had and he said, the system over there is better. So your friends won't get saved until they see a better system in you. Mm, amen. Wow. Woo. No they won't risk. <laughs> they won't risk ticking off their family. They won't risk alienate their friends unless they see something better. And Jesus said, what? A new and better way I bring you. A new and better system I'm establishing. Amen. And if you will just give up your citizenship here, 
and take up my citizenship and allow me to be king because I am a king of kings. Mm. What did Ron Carpenter say when he faced Pilate? Was, did you guys watch it? I, I've watched so many this week, even before. Pilate looked at him and Pilate said, you know, I have the power to take your life. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. So you don't understand. You don't have the power to take my life. I have the power to lay my life down. And I have the power to pick my life back up. Because you are a governor and I am a king. Mm, amen. Wow. And that same king is saying, I'm offering you that same power if you join my system. That is what Christmas is about. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. No preaching. <laughs> Christmas is a coup. When we sing Silent Night, what we're talking about is the silent invasion. <laughs> right under the devil's nose in a manger in Bethlehem. God says, I got an infiltration force that's coming in. But you know what makes our God so great? And I say our God because I believe that I got people in this room who are part of this system who have established themselves as ambassadors for his kingdom, what makes him so great is he came, he offered, he didn't just send an envoy. I remember I would tell people at the group home back in California, the juveniles would come up to me and, oh, Pastor D, that's what they call me, Pastor D. They'd say, you know, back in the hall, there's somebody telling me all about Islam. Why, why, are, why are you better? Why is what, why is what you're peddling better than that? Why is, why, why is yours better than these other people over here? Because they want peace, and they say this, and they say that. They want me to do good. Why are you better? And I always default to the one thing. Because we have a king who came himself. He didn't send an envoy. He didn't say, okay, uh, Michael, the archangel, you go down there and don't just tell Mary anything. I want you to start talk, knocking on every door and tell everybody that uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No. It says, heaven emptied itself out into that baby. And God himself, the king of all kings himself, walked up. And the king said, Stacy, I want you to be part of my team. The king said, Brenda, I'm dying for you. You know, when the United States separated from the British, some of you might remember that, right? We're not British anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Canadians, you may not understand that. <laughs> you know who didn't come over here to fight the Revolutionary War? The king. King George didn't. He had no problems in the Cornwallis over here. In the French-American War, I don't see the King of France over here fighting. But he had no problem sending who was it, De Rochelle or whoever it was. He had no problem sending him over. Right? We have a king who came. Amen. And said, you can't establish this kingdom on your own, so I'll do it. I'll lay the groundwork myself. I'll fight this battle. I'll take this territory, and then all you got to do is accept it. Why does it sound so easy? Why would you fight it so much? I want to end with this before we go into our communion time. He says he wants his kingdom to be established. Look at what God did. He wants it to, to last forever. This government, there will be no end. Look at who our king is. And if you haven't accepted him, look at who my king is. And then you make a decision. Do you want to be part of a kingdom like this? My king saw his kingdom, a part of it taken from him, when Adam forfeited it to the serpent. So you know what my king did? My king said, I'm not going to let this stand. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a seed out of that woman named Seth. And Seth is going to have a baby named Noah. And I'm going to plant that seed inside of an ark. And out of that ark is going to come a harvest from Ham and Sham and Japheth. 
they're going to harvest more seeds. And then out of that seed, I'm going to take a baby named Abraham. And I'm going to plant him in a place that he doesn't know yet. And then out of Abraham, I'm going to take another seed. A seed of a, of a man called Moab, no, Moses. I'm going to put him in an ark. I'm going to plant him in a little ark when he's a baby. And out of him, what I'm going to get a harvest of four million people. And then out of that four million, I'm going to plant them in a the wilderness. And, and a few, the tares will fall away, and the wheat will remain, and they'll walk into a promised land. And out of that promised land, I'm going to, I'm going to pluck, a sh- pluck a little shepherd boy. And I'm going to plant him inside of a, a palace and make him an example of who I want to be a leader. Because it says what? He's going to sit on the throne of who? The throne of David. Out of that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to plant a little unwed teenage mother. I'm going to plant a seed inside of her. And out of that seed, I'm going to plant Roger. I'm going to reap a harvest. I'm going to, I'm going to harvest Ben. I'm going to harvest Alice. I'm going to reap a harvest. And you know what's going to happen there? Then they're going to plant a seed. I'm going to plant that seed of Roger in ODC. And I'm going to get a harvest there. So my kingdom is always going to be Amen. expanding. I planted a seed of Richard Otto. I planted that seed in Badger. I have a harvest sitting here. And now that harvest is going to go plant seeds somewhere else and my kingdom is going to keep going. This one has a harvest sitting waiting for him in Florida. This one has a harvest for him in Rosa. There's a harvest sitting there. And then those seeds are going to go out. And my kingdom is going to keep going and going and going. And while your kingdom falls, mine remains. While your kingdoms come and go, your presidents get elected, get impeached, Get unelected, get whatever it is. Senators, they come and go. My kingdom will know no end. You know, I think people's common desire is to be part of something that is everlasting, something that's going to stand the test of time. We desire for stability, don't we? As people, we want stability. And His kingdom is the only thing that offers us stability. Because it is a kingdom that has no end. <coughs> you know, I okay. I want to say this, and I hope you take it the right way. Okay, I am a veteran. I love the United States of America. I thank God every day that this is the country that I was born in. Okay, but as a Christian, I vote. I vote what I believe my beliefs are. I vote what my king tells me to vote. I don't vote what a party tells me to vote. I vote what my king says. When I look at issues, I vote what the king says. I ask the king, King, I am your ambassador here. What do you want me to say about you? Because as I vote, my vote is a reflection of my king, right? So that's how I do things. But I hear these things, and I got, I got some great friends who are so big on You know, America is God's kingdom. Well, I I hate to tell you, but America is not God's kingdom. Because God's kingdom is not a democracy. It is a kingdom with a king who orders. When a king says go, you go. When a king says stop, you stop. The king is not asking for your vote. It's not like, okay, let's all take a vote. Do we want to get saved or not get saved? (laughs) Can can, can I need to be more blunt? The king didn't ask you to pay tithe. Right. The king ordered. He made an edict. Okay? So the king sets out a standard. So I was listening to a guy that had, I told this to my wife because I wouldn't say it to me in other circles. Then I'd probably get stoned by somebody. Or somebody will Facebook something or whatever. I said, you know, I listen to these people that they say that, well, we, we, could, we could run church this way, we could do this, and why are we struggling? Because God established the United States of America. God created the United States of America. Isn't that what they say? A lot of Christian people say that, don't they? I don't know they say. Ben, you, you, you were deep, you way deep into it for a long time. Is that what they say? God may shine on the United States of America. God may bless the United States of America as long as we follow his edicts. But I don't think God established the United States of America. You know why? Because our founding documents say what? To... to To form a more perfect union. We're not perfect, but we're better than some of the others. 
So when you say that God created the United States of America, you're saying God created something imperfect. Because our own documents say that we're not perfect. God created a system that was even better than the system that we have. And all he is asking is for us to join his kingdom. He's a conquering king, but he's a welcoming king. Amen. So as we get ready to, to prepare our hearts for communion, I want us to meditate on that for a minute. Because communion is one of those rites of passage to his kingdom. He says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of it. You're not part of my kingdom. You're living off of another system. So those who are watching online, those who are here in the building, those who may be watching later on and having Mountain Dew and a piece of bread for communion later on. Look at your heart and say, what system am I aligned with? Am I, am I trying to live dual citizenship? Or am I all into a kingdom that has complete and comprehensive rule over every area of my life? And if you can say yes to that, then you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And you now have ambassadorship. And you are his representative in the earth, wherever God has placed you. Let's pray for people who may not have that decision yet, who may not have made that. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now for those who are, are living in dual citizenship. They have one foot in and one foot out. They want the best of both worlds, Lord, but they find out that they can't have the best of both worlds. That they're just unstable, that they're shaky, that things don't fall into place, that things struggle. We pray right now that we wonder we wonder why our, our, our relationship with our kids, our, our spouses, our, our workplace, our, our things, why do all of them seem on shaky ground? Why does it seem like my marriage is on shaky ground? Why does it seem like my kids are on shaky ground? Why does it seem like I always got to walk on eggshells at work and I'm on shaky ground? Maybe, Lord, it's because they're dual citizens. Lord, give each one of us the strength to renounce our citizenship to this world and pick up the rights and the privileges of a child of God. Because you not only wanted us to be a citizen of heaven, you wanted us to be a joint heir with you of this kingdom. Lord, you have given us the ability to seat with you in high places. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you give to the power of your Holy Spirit strength to those who have not made that decision, that they will see a new and better way. And that they will choose you in your systems. And this Christmas will be the Christmas where they say, I belong to a new country. I belong to a new way of thinking. A new way of living. A new life. We give you praise and glory in your precious name. Amen. If I can have Larry and Richard come forward, we're going to get ready to take our communion. Communion, our symbol of citizenship. Our symbol of saying, I belong to a new country. I belong to a new system. As we partake of it today, allow God to break down every barrier, every wall that has been put up that has allowed you to have your own way in His country. Give Him free reign as you take communion today. Thank you guys. For your Please hold on to the elements and we'll take them together once they're all passed out. Thank you.
As we take this bread, we're saying yes, Lord, to your kingdom, to your healing, to your rules. In, in your kingdom, there is no sickness. In your kingdom, there is no anxiety. In your kingdom, there is no depression. In your kingdom, there is no fear. In your kingdom, there is perfect love. There is a peace that passes understanding. There is health and wholeness for all. Lord, as we take this bread, we accept that for ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the bread. When, Jesus, when, when God went to establish a people to start this process of creating and reestablishing his kingdom, he went to a, a man named Abram. We just spent four weeks talking about Abram. And he told Abram, get out of your country, get out of your family's house, and get away from your father. Or get out of your father's house and get away from and get out of your family. That's what he said, right? Because I want to establish something new with you. You know what happens when you take the blood? That's what we're doing. Because that word, get out of your family's house, we were talking about it yesterday. It is those things that are passed on through our bloodline, or those generational curses, those things that maybe mama and daddy might have passed on to us, or our great grandpa. Maybe those things that we struggle with that we don't know why, but somebody in our family does. And he says, when I establish my kingdom, I'm giving you a blood transfusion. So when you take the cup, you're saying like when you're obeying what Abraham did. You're getting out of your family and you're saying, I want your family. I want your bloodline. I told you guys when I was in the army, my dog tag said A positive. It had my blood on, my blood type on it. My mom is O, but my daddy is A positive. And he's saying, I want you to be part of my kingdom. So much so that I want to erase the bloodline. That tainted blood that flowed through you, that tainted blood that says, when I, when, I, when I struggle, I want to drink. That tainted blood that says, I could never hold a relationship because nobody in my family held a relationship. That tainted blood that says, the only way I can find release is through a computer screen. That relationship, that blood, I'm ready to take it out of you. Mm, hallelujah. And I got royal blood to put in you. So I can do like what Peter says, I can make you a royal priest to it. And when they prick your finger and they test your blood, it comes up me. That's what this is all about. It just think like we celebrated Christmas. That was what that baby was all about. That little baby had all of this already inside of him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are giving us this opportunity to become part of your family. That your blood is the blood that flows through our veins. Your DNA is who we are. No longer do we have to be bound by those things that held us back. No longer do we have to be bound by the sickness. No longer do we have to be bound by the labels. No longer do we have to be bound by the addictions. Lord, those things that, that have coursed through our body for all these years, Lord. That as we accept your blood and we accept your lordship, we accept your kingship, we accept your kingdom. Lord, we are taking a blood transfusion. And it is your blood that flows through our veins. A new DNA. A new way. As I take this blood, I am declaring I am a royal priesthood. I am part of a holy nation. I am a peculiar person set apart to do the will of my king. I thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for giving me this strength and this power. I thank you, Lord, for this awesome responsibility. And I do not take it lightly. I take it seriously. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the cup. We ran about 20 minutes over, but that's all your guys' fault because you guys prayed too much earlier. Amen. <laughs> We've been a long time if you guys didn't get your praise on. Yes, Miss Gary. I'm uh, an announcement. I left to meet my sponsor for AA and Got texted and not too second back for communion. And as I was driving in the parking lot, I was banging into somebody's car so that I've got my insurance card and everything, but I gotta pee. <laughs> just just FYI. Yes. Thank you. It we get take care of. God has a way.
right? Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, as we get ready to, to leave, remember we have the, the community hall over there. There is food available, so please go over and enjoy some fellowship time. Larry's mashed potatoes are over there. Huh? Oh, pray for the food now? Lord, bless the food in Jesus' name. Amen. Because the king, because the king puts on a good feast. That's right. Hey, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may he make his face shine upon you, may he establish you, may he forever give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.